Webcam. I know that. Chat, what's up? <laughs> YouTube, what's up, man? I'm here with my man Kent's crib. We are chilling in the um, streaming room. This is what our setup, our green screen is popping. This is the Needed Podcast episode number 21. Doing this for 21 weeks. And it's the first time I get to enjoy my man Kent. Yeah. Kent, introduce yourself to the YouTube. The YouTube, if you hit the like button, please comment on if you think Kent did a good job or you think he sucked. There's one or the other. And please let me know. I mean, if my levels are good, chat, let me know. Um, like I said, introduce yourself to the YouTube crowd because YouTube doesn't, Twitch barely knows you. Listen, I mean, I, people probably know me for Fortnite. That's, Nobody. That's kind of where I've made my name recently. So you probably know me a little bit from that. But yeah, balling you up. Been playing Madden for quite some time, so that's how I met Dubby, and that's why we're doing this today. Back when you played Madden, and Madden 08, back when yep. you like played a little yep. bit, I was the man. Yep. And now you just you're washed up, but you got the night. Just Kent just got the best streaming equipment <laughs> in the world, and just doesn't stream. He's the only one that has all. Look, he has a green screen. Yep. He went out and bought the douchebag green screen. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He bought the yep. douchebag green screen. And you see, like, it only fits half the fucking screen. <laughs> so. But he never streams. It's the only one that has the 99 setup but never streams. It's pretty crazy. Yep. But uh, first of all, let's talk about Madden Bowl and how Kent was a main reason why I won the Madden Bowl. I will let you tell the story back when I went to Orlando and I, I was looking bad against Canes. Okay. And um, I was able to beat True Boy and Jet because, one, I'll tell you how bad Jet is. Yep. Jet was locking me up, right, in the yep. first half. Nickel blissing the yep. shit out of me. Yep, yep. For some reason, in the third quarter or something, he came out in 4-4, like cover to invert, just block shit defense. Yep. You know what I did, being yep. a veteran? I know huddled my ass up and down the field. Yep. I was not going to let him get back yep. in the nickel blitz. Yep. But anyway, I struggled against nickel blitz. And then when I came home for a week, what did you help me learn? I mean, it was painful to watch. All so right. I'm sitting here, and I'm watching this go down. And I'm like, man, my man, I know he's better than this. He, mm -hmm. He's way better than this. He just, he, he's got nothing for this nickel blitz. So, nope, nobody had anything for nickel blitz. Mm -hmm. So, he came back. I'm like, we hopped on. I'm like, look, I'm going to lab you up. We're going to get this nickel blitz, nickel blitz blocked. We uh, flied in the, the, the way to, to, to block it. Mm -hmm. Which involved what was it like a purple route to Contain a running back or the uh, delay route, delay, delay route, route to yep, the running yep, back, yep, yep. and it allowed you to see based on where the C was on the head for um, pause. The you got to pause. You got to pause when you say you're on the head and stuff uh, like that. Pause. This is Twitch chat, YouTube. You got to let <laughs> him know he's not used to doing broadcast. You got to say pause when you say <laughs> some shit like that. Okay. Pause, pause, pause. So, mm -hmm. long story short, what we did is he could tell by the what we were doing. He could tell if the nickel was going to come in clean or if the mm -hmm. running back was going to pick him up. You could tell by the icon. So going into the players' Man. bowl, Madden bowl, going into the man bowl, Madden bowl in Houston against Super Bowl, bowl weekend, right? Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. So I'm out in Vegas, got everybody watching um, out there. We're out there for the Super Bowl. Everybody's watching W win. Hey, I flew in this defense. Watch this. He's going to dominate. Sure, shit, he did. Um, so he, he was able to block the blitz. Players at that time weren't used to having somebody being able to block it so they didn't believe it was real right so they kept firing nickel blitz nickel blitz nickel basic, blitz and so it just made the game so easy for dubby which is why he won the won the tournament i won a tournament because yeah that's pretty much why i beat problem yeah and if you watch that game i didn't trust it right away in the first half like i was still doing the bunch thing block everybody and slide left and just try to but then once I you could see if you watch that game I watch it but you know I watched it at least ten times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once I got to feel like this is gonna work every time, it made it so easy. Just two seams and an oh, in route and just it just made the game really easy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But uh it was good because in Orlando I didn't have to play nickel other than Jet and he was the only but he stopped running it because I played True Boy and then I played Holly who ran some wild shit that mm -hmm. wasn't nickel bliss. But mm -hmm. Kent is like I would probably say about 15% of the reason why I won that last game. Now, game against problem, he probably is like 45, 50% reason why I won so, that game. So, you know, he's throwing out statistics here, 15%, 45%. Yeah. I didn't get a cut. Not not shit. You're on the podcast right now. You have I'm opportunity the podcast, for the world. Right. Like, yeah. nobody knows who balling yep. you up is yep. without me. You just got a whole shout out. True that. You True have that. all the streaming equipment. All you got to do yep. is flick a stream on yep. a man every once in a while. You get a host. You get everything. But, yep. you know, you don't want to You okay. want to play Fortnite. Fortnite. Okay. Okay. Fortnite's not for you. You got to give this up, man. No, nah, Fortnite's my game. For 
for <laughs> I'm tough as shit in Fortnite. Jesus. So, but that is Kent. He used to come up with all the hotness back ten years ago, but I don't know. I mean, he's do we want to talk? Do we want to talk about the Chuck Hollywood? No, we don't want to talk about that. That's that first. That was people bad. don't want to know. About, people need to know about Chuck Hollywood. I think they know about that. First of all, it was just a fluky situation. It really, it really was. So, so let's just let's well, let's go there real quick. All right, Chuck Hollywood game. All right, what tournament was this? It's somewhere out in Players Bowl, Players Bowl, Philadelphia, right. August. No, it was like February fourth, two thousand and eight. Yep, yep. So two thousand eight. Um, it's when I was probably <laughs> the only year I was tough at Madden. Anyways. Relatively um, tough. Yeah, you are. Right. I was, you know, rocket catching, doing doing the post route or strafe catching. I guess is what it was at the time. Yeah, doing the post route. It was, you know, just becoming popular. Like like strafe catching didn't come become a thing till later in the year. Secret was running it at the early tournaments. I went to an early tournament, saw what he was doing, brought it into my game, started running it. I don't know. If that, I mean, did I just run into you in an online game or something? I don't remember how it went down. Long story short, I was running this route. Where you could get a one-handed animation into the end zone, much like this year right now. Yeah, uh, that one-handed animation is worse this year than it was then. No that way. One-handed no, end zone. No way. I'm telling no you. It, it, you no can way. ask the chat. They play man now. That one hand in the end zone right now was all the way no. back. It really is a big deal right now, man. People are catching. But time, the ball. But time out. You don't. Can you? Can you trigger that animation every single time right now? It, I would tell you it's it's pretty consistent. It wasn't you couldn't trigger it every time back then. It was just no, yeah, most of the time when you do the ball, it was a hundred percent of the time you could trigger this animation. Yeah, okay? but I'm telling you. But now I'm telling you that same animation is back. It's probably not, the I've game seen, a little better, it, so it's it, not it, as yeah, bad yeah, as yeah, it yeah, was yeah. then. But anyways, it was, it was right OP. You get down yeah. you, and depending on which route it was and the distance from the goal line was what play you would call. So like at a trio, there was like this post route that you would motion over to the right. Corner of the end zone, Moss to go up, get it, one-handed touchdown from 25 yards out. Problem was, as you got closer to the end zone, those one-handed routes weren't as easily triggered. So, cooked up one from, like, inside the five out of weak eye, something. Some like that, yeah. Anyways, W didn't come to the source for how to do it, right? He, he, he bit it from, like, I think Akron Boy or something. Shout out to Akron Boy. He's been in the community Jesus. for some time. Anyways, I think he bit it from Akron Boy. Went to went to Players Bowl. Got to what well, final eight, final four, yeah, some I got shit. Down there. Yeah. Runs into Chuck Hollywood. By the Terrible. way, if you've lost to Chuck Hollywood, you're not a real Madden player. Let's yeah. just start there. Yeah, that's bad. That was bad. Bad player. He goes to my route that he bit from a third party, and what happened? It was just fluky. Like it was. Just it was fluky. fluky. It, did, it, it didn't work. It didn't. It didn't work. It just not that it didn't work. It just. I mean, it mm. could happen to anybody. Threw a know. pick, threw a pick, game over, lost to Chuck Hollywood. So, yeah, he's got Chuck Hollywood uh, L on his belt there. Also, Kent, I will give Kent credit this, is that he was the first man with the quarters three deep defense in man 16. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Although, mm-hmm. me and myself, I took it to an insane level by incorporating the cover two sink when Kent was just running, uh, you know, prevent and, and things of that nature. But, but what made the quarters three deep hot? Oh, it stopped the run. It stopped inside zone. Yeah. Not stop, it blew up inside zone. Yeah, most of them. Some of it so, didn't. If there was a tight end there, it didn't blow it up. But. Okay, okay, okay. But, yeah, the quarter three deep was good. If I would have had cover two sink in that draft champions tournament, you know, because I, I was just running, like, prevent and mm-hmm. cover three mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. stuff. But, oh, there he is. Woo, man, there he is. Damn, we timed out. Woo? Wow. Woo, what's up, Woo? Wow. I what's saw he on? He's Woo. on a creep name? Let me tell you this. Woo, you back. No, the Woo has new names all the time. I will tell you this, Wu, Wu was in rare form this morning. I go on the stream, he's in a battle. Ooh. A battle with <laughs> Tyree Loaded, man. And I, I tell you, man, Ooh. if Wu, the thing with Wu, if he would have recorded that and put on YouTube, he'd get 20,000 views easily, man. That game was awesome. He wound up losing it because uh, he is oh, right, though. Everybody has I thought the he was actually going to win this one. No, he, everybody okay. actually has the six-month ebook for Wu right now. Yep. Everybody has the, we're halfway through the year. He's right, so everybody pretty much has... You know, what you call it has like the scheme. Like I'm gonna run bunch, root route cams like Joe Rice and Kiv and yep, all that. Yep. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and run the three through five like like pop. And that's you know that's what everybody's gonna do. Check. And so now Sibu's playing people that are doing this and are you know a little bit better than him. And they're they're kind of whooping his ass right now. Well, SDW is actually so, so, really good. so all right. So is I guess is that something new? 
I mean, well, Wu, we'll, if if all these games were played in the first like month, I think we would have a better chance. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. With Michael Vick and everything, you know, it's really tough for Wu to go ahead and get wins. If they if he probably played them, like you know, end of August, early September, he probably win. Yeah, or yeah. when a new game comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wu is sure. definitely a new game type of guy. Yeah, when a yeah. new game comes out, yeah, he's, he's the man. On top yeah, he's the, people, he's the know? man. When he can run his five wide and make his reads, yep, you know, he's yep. just really on top of people. But apparently, I did not see him versus SDW, but I would bet SDW beat him every single time because S is actually pretty good and uh, Siwoo is not that caliber of player. But I did not see that. But he went 6-0 and with his placement games. You know, placement games unless you play sure. anybody. Yep, 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 so yep. everybody's only going to go 6-0 in their placement games. Yep. And then he started playing good people and started taking some Larrys. And then when I went when I went back, when I went back to hit the stream because, you know, I was driving this morning. So I, when I'm in the car, I'm looking at I was I watched the one game... With, and he lost. He choked. He do a he do four picks, mm. but and then he blamed you know six month thing. Yeah. But yeah. so now I go, so now I'm like, damn. Let me I hop back in the car. I might have went to the market or something. Hop back in the car. Go to watch Subaru again. Back on Fortnite. He tapped out early today. Yeah. He was on Fortnite before one p.m. today. <laughs> I was like, damn, boo, that's rough. So we'll see if he can qualify. Could he qualify for last chance tournament? No. Thirty two top thirty two. There's, there's not a chance. There's uh, not a chance. Now we got my man Vilma in the building. We're going to talk about Vilma in the C four mm. championship. Once again, he's in the final four of the C4 championship. Vilma is the he's in, C4. There's six people that go to these things. I don't know. Why, no. does, he, why does Vilma get credit no, there's for more final fours where six people show up? No. There's more people than that. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm The C4 events. This is all I want to talk about is the C4 events because all right, all right. obviously Larry Ridley is doing a little something with his Madden thing on the side. You know, he's, he's pumping out these Madden tournaments. He has, like, the nice – set up to an extent. You know what I mean? And he's got, you know, this online qualifying. Everything's running good. But, man, um, if he wants to elevate it to the next level to get all the top players, we got to be giving up more than $600 to whoever wins. Because my man Jimmy from Who Run Philly gives out more than $600. So if you're in Philly, man, please check out Who Run Philly. All the tournaments will be promoted. You will make more than $600. So if Larry really, he's, he's on the right path to do something good for the community. But you need to, at some point, get over a thousand dollars total prize pool. You know, because like if you got to five thousand total prize, then maybe people will say, "All right, let me play regs for a little bit. Let me try to qualify." You know what I mean? And that's that's pretty much where I think Larry, because it looks like a lot of money being thrown around with the, the, these Larry Ridley tournaments between mm-hmm. the sponsors, the mm-hmm. people he had broadcasting, the Foxwood casinos. You know what I mean? It's like it's like, come on, man! You gotta give us a little bit of, you know I mean, a little bit more money. You know, mm-hmm. raise the prize a little bit more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Vilma has won so many that he actually has a whole dining room set of gaming chairs right now. Yeah, oh, oh. because they get he gets his six hundred and a gaming chair. You know, so he has four gaming chairs. One's broken a little bit, and he has two that are in a box still. So if you need a new gaming chair. Anyway, chat YouTube. If you need a new gaming <laughs> chair, please hit up TBO Vilma. He's in the chat right now. Vilma, what's the price going for right now? Vilma will sell you these chairs for fifty dollars a piece. <laughs> he was really trying to get rid of them, man. Mm. I'm Can't, into ooh. it. Could you get on the game BC Wool right now? I, honestly, honestly, I think I could. I, I don't know. Nah, I, don't I really do. Who is pretty good? Who is not bad? He knows how to. He runs Nickel G and mans up everybody, and he runs bunch. I, I think I think I think I could beat him. I think, and and this is what's crazy to me about Siwu is that he will complain about everybody running the nation, but he runs the nation. It's not like he out here with something spectacular. He's just running over G man, everybody up like Kiv, mm-hmm. and he's running a bunch like yeah, Kiv. Well, so, so the problem when you play in Siwu, here's here's when you play people like Siwu. Here's why they are. I, I don't I don't want to I want to use the right word. I don't want to call them tough. I mean, it's not tough, but when you're playing a random, okay, yeah. okay, that's like what it's like playing Siwoo, okay? Because the problem is he don't know why the fuck he's calling what he's calling, and he doesn't know why he manned up that guy to that receiver. He's just doing it. So He's just doing it. So how do you even anticipate what he's going to go to to then counter that? You don't know. So... Siwu might have a game where he might lock somebody up because you don't have a clue what he's calling because he doesn't know why he's calling it. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to get games where he's getting flooded because, again, he doesn't know why he's calling what he's calling. That's a good point. But, I mean, I think I, th- I think you're discrediting Wu's Madden intelligence. I think he's, <laughs> I think he's actually kind of smart. He just always, like he, he just make a lot of mistakes. You know, and that's, eventually, that means he's not smart. But... <laughs> 
like I said, Larry Ridley, we got to raise the price. We got to get a bigger prize pool. That's essentially what people show out to do is the money makes people come out, makes the big guns come out. So, so, so them must not be in a franchise at every live event. You know what I'm saying? No. And uh, so we want to get him playing against, you know, the better players. And essentially that's why that tournament is the D-League because, you know, you don't have the big-name players. It's not really even, S, what's up? It's really not even the, uh, you know, it's not about the tournament. It's about who you're playing, you know. And, and even, he says, Doma do beat T. Davis every time they get to these live events. Like, he beats him every time. But in the one game where Vilma had to beat him to get to the Arizona Club Series, he lost that game. Mm. So that the, was so the game. one that meant something. Yeah, it meant a lot oh, more. Okay, you know, okay. pretty much. So okay. that's pretty much, and that's why I'd be mad at Vilma because he's good enough to win these regs games. You know, what I'm saying where when he's playing the D League guys, but if he would go ahead and put the effort into mutt and the effort into mutt that he does into regs and shit. That he would be a better man player. So okay. again, we want to put a plug out there. Buy those gaming chairs. Vilma needs that coin to build up his salary cap. Team. Yes, Vilma please needs, help him out with that. If you need a gaming chair, you know what I'm saying <laughs> Vilma got six of them bitches, and I know he's Vilma got six gaming chairs, and don't sit in one. He still be chilling on the bed playing the game. I promise. <laughs> but uh, but it is Foxwood Casinos. It's not this weekend. It's the weekend after, I believe. I hopefully I'll be able to go out there and support my man Vilma to win his like fifth. C4 championship. He does. He is the Yukon women of C4, <laughs> of C4 championships. Yeah, I'll tell yeah, you that. He yeah. definitely is. And it's important because, like, I mean, shoot, if you, at the end of the day, it's not the brightest lights, but it's still bright lights. You know what I mean? You get a little experience playing, you know, live events, playing next to somebody and playing with a lot of people watching. So it's definitely a good experience. And, uh, shit, if it's free money, it's free money. Free you know money. what I mean? So, right. No, nah, Chompy, for real. Them, he'll tell you right now, man, he's selling these these chairs, man, especially if you're in the New York area. Hit them up. Them will definitely drive that thing to you for a cool 50. <laughs> but anyway, what else was So, this weekend, the Man Challenge is live in living color. The Man Challenge, we haven't talked about draft champions. No one has played draft champions since the online elimination, which I kind of feel like it was like six months ago. You know I'm saying, but it really was like two weeks ago, the... the What's called the single elimination for the Madden Challenge. Now, we got the groups, so we're going to take a look at these groups, and we're going to find out who we like and who you like, even though at this point I feel like you don't even know who any of these people really are. But we will take a look at these groups and pick who we got coming out of these groups and who is the person that's going to stay home is pretty much what we're going to go to. In the first group, we got Pavin, the club champion. I mean, the club series champion has made the groups again or has made the next live event which was always impressive to win a belt and then come back and make the last right. live event. Right. With Beast Mo Mac, former belt winner on Draft Champions. So how many are coming out of the four? Three. Three? Yes. Only oh. one person gets sat behind. All right. And then two people, I believe four people get buys. I really don't know how, because if it's three to six, 12 people get out. So then it's, yeah, I think two people get buys. All right. I mean, I already, I already got my picks. So. Also, who you got between, who do you think giving out, Saya or Crit? You gotta pick one of those guys ain't gonna make it. That's what uh, I said. Whatever Kritobin. You don't like him? Hey man, it was a good run. It was a good run. You don't think so? Crit, I mean, he's been in the chat a long time. He's a Twitch guy. Been in the Twitch chat probably since I've been streaming. You know what I'm okay. saying he's a okay. PlayStation guy. So it's kind of making a live event on PlayStation is a little half a reward is making a live event on Xbox. It's like it's like playing in that C four tournament. Qualifying kind on PS4. Of, yeah. It's like when Vilma yeah. wins those C4 tournaments. It's, it's like similar. making a live event. And, yep. and, and I'm saying, we all stop talking about Vilma's C4 all tournaments. All right, all right. All right. That's a good accomplishment for a regs player. It's the best thing you can do on regs other than win the one regs tournament that mattered. But anyway, so you like Crit to be the one to get knocked out. I'm yeah. not mad at you. Yep. I think Sai is a tricky player. I play Sai a lot. Um, so I would agree with you. Obviously, I got the two belt winners moving on. But draft champions is a fickle beast, man. You know, because one of these guys get their playbook a decent draft, they can make a good run. You know, that's the mm -hmm, big deal. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you, Crip probably not making it out. Next group, we got the Kane Man, JS the Best, last year's Ravens Club Series champion, Spoto and Bugs. Who do we got not coming out of here? I mean, Jay's the best. Jay, you got JS the best. Want to take an L right he's, now? He's, he's out. No. I like Spoto. I like Bugs. You like Spoto. Canes. So here's what here's what I observe about Canes. He's always in the mix. He's always around. Yeah. But when is he going to make the run? That's what I'm looking for. I want to see him get to a Final Four, get to a championship game, and see what he can do. He's always in the mix. 
Yeah, so I think he has a good chance. Obviously, I think Bugs. I played Bugs a lot the last three years. This is the best he's probably ever been playing Madden right now. So unless he super lays down, he should make a good run in his tournament. What's his defense looking like? Uh, That's been his downfall. It's always been his downfall. Or he pressed the wrong button at certain times and stuff like that. You know, okay. he's getting old. Okay. You know, this is a big right. tournament. So we'll see. But I fully, he's definitely going to get out of here. And Spoto, the man that was very mad at me for not putting him in the top 10 in the Madden draft. He top, thought, top 10? Yeah, he thought he should be in the top 10. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He thought, he said because he made two draft champions live events and he won a club. He said he should be in the top 10. You know, I felt a lot of people with your accomplishments. And we will go back, let's go back to our PlayStation debate. Definitely made it from PlayStation. So, eh, you got to yeah. take that with a grain of salt. Yep. So, but I told him earlier, he, we were DMing, and I was like, man, this is why are you worried about where somebody ranks you? Just go ahead and win, and then people will be forced to rank you high mm-hmm. if you win this belt. Mm-hmm. So, we shall see how Spoto responds to not being picked in the top 10 of the W Men mock draft. So, we shall see how he responds. But I agree with you, JS. Only has that Club Series championship with the Ravens. Uh, that is his resume. And I agree with Kings, man. You're right. I mean, I think this might be his time to make a run. But it's going to be tough with Bugs and Spoto. This is a, a sneaky little decent group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the next one is probably the best group of the tournament between Journey Ghost, Joe Rice, and VY Electrify. And this is seems like an easy pick to so mm-hmm. who's not going to make it out of here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. VY? <sighs> VY demolished Skimbo in the online elimination. Ooh. VY is prepared for this tournament. VY is a draft champs guy. He's a he's a two tight end run stretch and dive and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So he might be prepared. So I don't know if Joe Rice is a draft champs guy right now. Joe Rice in his group got blown out by 42 games and made it out. It's crazy to think what? that. But by two All right, games, I'm switching. He made it out. Joe Rice is out. Joe Rice is out. Joe Rice is out. I think Ghost, Ghost is really good. I played yep. him a couple times with Draft Champions, obviously. And Drenny is the Draft Champs god yep. of all gods. Yep. Yep. So Drenny's definitely going to make a good run. So I would not be surprised that Joe Rice, who, who his group score was, a, he was a negative 86 in his combined. Yeah, yeah. It's not looking really good for Joe Rice. Yeah, he, he, he got to show us something here <laughs> in the uh, man challenge for him to move on. Next four, we got... Kerry Q, okay. Crush, Young Kid, and Prodigy. That's another tough little group. All these groups have some substantial players in it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, this one's going to come down for me between Crush and Prodigy. I think Kerry's going to make a run. Kerry, with that dude's close, especially the way it's playing right now, I think he can make a decent little run in this tournament. Obviously, Kiv is Kiv. And uh, Chris, uh, Crush and Kiv are boys. I talked about this last time I went over this one. Me and Skimbo were in a group together. And um, the Madden Classic last year, he didn't help me at all. Like, he didn't help me prepare for the other two guys. Like, mm-hmm. we could have teamed up and had a great plan for both of them, right? Yep. But his his thought process was, okay, if I help W prepare for Kerry... You don't then, want to be the same person. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That was his thought process to yep. where if, if, if I lock up Kerry, then he's going to be prepared for it yep. when he plays Skimbo. Yep. So he didn't help me at all. I wound up going 3-0 in that group, including busting Skimbo ass. Yeah. So that's just a little bit of karma that comes back, you know what I'm saying, and... Uh, but we'll see how Crush and Kiv go ahead and pre- if they prepare or if Kiv has the same mindset that Skimbo had. Because Kiv is the brains of this operation, these 818 guys, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. I think Crush has a little bit more um, thoughts than Joe Rice. Joe Rice is just Kiv's, like, ever since he tried to get his hair cut, you know that Joe Rice is just, he does what Kiv says. What yep. Kiv does, Joe Rice does. But yep. I think Crush is a little bit more, think outside the box, try to make his own way. Than Joe Rice is, but you know we'll see how that goes. But I, Prodigy's so another where are we good player. Where are we landing here? I must, you know, hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take. I think Crush is gonna go. Crush is gonna go. Crush I think out. I gotta agree. Ah, that's tough. But yeah, I gotta agree with you. I think Carry and Prodigy both want to run the ball a little bit, and uh, Carry. I think Carry is poised to make a little run, especially if he gets the right draft. If he gets like a real good running back, mm-hmm. I don't know. And one thing about. Draft champions. The last couple of years, they've always changed the draft like before the live event. Like last year at the like when you had the the online elimination, you could have one team wind up getting five ninety one zones and another team only getting one. Right, that's how it was Stupid. online. But that's then competitive when we, Madden. For but you. then when we got to the live event, they all the drafts were pretty much the same. Everybody got two ninety one zones. Everybody got you know a similar draft. So I wonder if they will switch the drafts at all between now and. 
or between the online part and now. So that's pretty much what I how I'm thinking as far as you know what they're gonna do if they're gonna change the draft at all. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's pretty much how I'm thinking about that. But that goes back and that's where I bring to the broadcast. Like what have they had at these draft champions broadcasts? Because this is gonna be probably the fifth draft champions tournament between the first year they had one, the second year I believe they had two. Man seventeen year they had two. Man eighteen they had one. And man nineteen. This is gonna be the fifth draft champions broadcast. Now I think to this is pretty much how what can they do? What have they done in the past broadcast for the draft champions ones and what can they do differently? For me, there's a lot of downtime in the man tournament, right? Where the center of the dust talking to Cookie Boy and Skimbo, whoever the hell doing the broadcast, right? Mm-hmm. I think they should record everybody's draft, the entire draft, right? It's not hard. OBS, hit record, boom, bang. That's pretty much uh, how it is. But then they should also interview these guys and talk about which draft pick was the hardest, which one was the easiest, and pretty much show their draft in the entirety. And the why draft, they chose who they yeah, chose. Exactly. And, and, and pretty much because the draft not going to take long to show a draft. It might take 10, 15 minutes to show a whole draft. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, even the longest draft in the world going to be, you know, a nice 15 minutes. That's the longest. Some drafts can go by in eight minutes if you're getting the right player. And this will be the per- perfect segment to go to in between games as they're teeing up, as they're loading up to play the next game. I don't want to sit there and listen to them talk about God knows what, just filling airtime. Yeah. Show me something. Show me what I'm about to watch, why they got the team that they that they got to, and, and and talk about that. Also talk about some of the base players, too, that you may have. Like I, This guy might have an 85-speed gold DB where the other guy only has a 79 gold, gold DB. You know, it's pretty much different different things and different things that are in the playbooks as well. I Man, there's so many things that I can prepare in the draft champions tournament than other just showing their top three players. Like, that doesn't really show me right. what their decisions were. Show me about a tough decision. Maybe they only had two wide receivers, but then they could have got a legend wide receiver, but they still wanted that legend DB. Make these guys sit down and talk about it because they're going to be there Wednesday. Tomorrow they're going to get there. They're not going to play probably till Friday. and it, it won't take too much, too long to do this, mm-hmm. honestly. We could do this from here for every player in a couple hours, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to have little interviews, this is something that I think can really help the Draft Champions broadcast. I think it's something that everybody would be, you know, awesome to really watch and then see that player go ahead and perform. Oh, he took Randy Moss instead of man, Rod Woodson. So let's see if Randy Moss can really go off. Bang, Randy Moss is catching passes. Now your commentator booth can say, wow, that's pretty dope that Randy Moss, man, he making plays, that decision was right for him. Mm-hmm. And then we can go by and think about all the decisions he made in his draft. Like, damn, maybe he should have picked that running back. He didn't just run the ball in from the two-yard line. He had to settle for three. He should have took Franco Harris or whatever it may be. So I think that's definitely a good thing they can always go back to uh, throughout the games, really. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> we'll see. And I don't know. I don't know if Skimbo's going to do the commentary. I'm assuming that he wouldn't because I, I – I already know he was sick from doing the commentary one tournament that he wasn't in. If he had to go do time commentary back to back in tournaments he didn't make, he'd be pretty sick. <laughs> so I didn't ask him, but I'm I'm assuming that he's not gonna do it. But I know the MLB guy is gonna be back. Did you check out the uh oh MBO, whatever it is. Did you check out the broadcast of the club championship? Yeah, no, I yeah, I think I saw the the one guy uh I don't know what his name I is. Forget. I forget. He, he did well. He did well. I think they all did very well. I yeah. think the broadcast was really good. Obviously, I think Scott and RG are fabulous. Oh, best. Yeah, and like, so like you said, I really don't have a problem with any of the broadcasts, really. Even the way it got desynced a couple times, they were able to fix that really fast. But this goes back to showing the whole draft, man. Give me the whole damn draft. And, and people will say, man, they don't want their opponents to know all the draft picks. The thing about draft champions is... After we do the drafts, or like the night before the tournament, they'll hand you a whole paper of your opponent's players. Mm-hmm. Same, pretty much every tournament is something that they uh, they don't tell enough people that. They literally give you a packet with, the, with you know, everybody else in the tournament, their entire I mean, team, their info. playbook, everything. That's yeah. good info. Yeah, they don't, t- they don't tell you enough. So it's nothing, it's nothing that these players up there don't know already, and if they want to put the time in it and really learn it for the most part. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's just the biggest thing I think that can help the broadcast. And, um, shoot. But let's talk about the NFL free agency right now because the Eagles are once again probably the best team in the NFC right now. I'm excited about them. Talk about your Lions. Okay. Are you? Are we still Lions no. or are we fully Cleveland Browns? No, we're, we're on the Browns. We're on the Browns. You know, I gave, I gave a lot of time to the Lions 
They haven't done a damn thing. They will never do a damn thing. So when Baker came to Cleveland, that's when we kind of switched allegiances. So as of last year, I'm a Browns fan. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So you're a Browns fan. So I don't give a shit what the Lions have going on. Matt Patricia is just basically taking all the Patriots players, bringing them to Detroit. They're still not going to be able to do a damn thing. It's okay. I mean, shoot. But so you're on the Browns. The Browns, a lot of my buddies are in Cleveland, obviously, but and so they're hype about the Browns. Bang, because they got Olivier Vernon. They got Sheldon Richardson. They boosted up. Oh, there go Guru right there in the building without a sub badge next to his name. Guru, I appreciate you coming by. <laughs> I'm saying it's okay. All that money is cool. You can spend it with your celebrities and all your good times you be having with them, man. Just keep putting on the good Twitch shows for Mutt, man. But uh, look, that look how see was spelled division too. Like, <laughs> gee, oh Jesus, golly. But anyway, but so the Browns have definitely got. This is probably the, the best outlook the Browns have had in a long time. As far as one, the Browns have got a lot better. And the Steelers got weaker. The Ravens got substantially weaker. And the Bengals are the Bengals. Mm-hmm. I, actually, I think Marvin Lewis is actually gone now, isn't he? He's gone. So Marvin Lewis mm-hmm. isn't going to be in with the Bengals. That's pretty wild. So they kind of just step back a little what was going to call it so the Bengals I think are going to struggle just a little bit when you have somebody in there for like 20 years it's definitely going to be a little tougher to go so I think the Browns are really when you really look at it, the Browns could attempt, potentially win that division no doubt although I'm not mad at what the Steelers are doing because although it would suck to be a Steelers fan you probably lost your two most exciting players you know two I mean Hall of Fame quality players really and Antonio Brown who's probably close to top five receiver ever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's gone <clears throat> and Le'Veon's been gone. Where where did Le'Veon go to school? Michigan State. Michigan, okay, all right. So how do you feel about Le'Veon Bell as a person? I mean, he's the, best. He's, he's the best in the NFL. No, like in all seriousness, I mean, that's your guy, but how do you feel about him? I'm going to be honest. I don't like what he's been doing to the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some things that we'll never know as the general public as to why it went down the way it went down. I have my thoughts on that. What was that? Um, I don't think he could pass a drug test. So he's failed two. So if he would have showed up to camp, failed a third, you're out of the NFL for good. So he used that as a platform to say, I'm holding out for the greater good of the running backs and to get more money, that kind of thing. Mm, I so think it comes down to it. I just don't think he could have passed a drug test. He knew three strikes, he was out. So he already failed two drug tests and three strikes, he was done. Yep. So essentially, is this three strike thing last forever to where if he comes back in the league now and fails a drug test, he's out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So we'll never know, but that 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 that's my take on it. <clears throat> but I think the Steelers, but he's still a man. Yeah, I still think the Steelers are okay. You know, they stuck to their guns, they're stuck to their decisions, and ultimately, although Antonio Brown is fabulous and Le'Veon Bell is fabulous, one they miss Le'Veon Bell. You're obviously going to miss a player like that, but you can replace a running back. You know, mm-hmm. we see teams do it all the time, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to say you can replace Antonio Brown, but one Juju is becoming a pretty solid borderline Pro Bowl type wide receiver. And he's going to be that down. Now, obviously, you would love to have two wide receivers and your running back like they had last year or the year before this. Well, you know what I mean. But, uh, I mean, I, I think they'll be okay if they, you know, just stick to their guns. So, how do you think A.B. is going to do not being – where 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 he end up? Oakland. Oakland. Who's throwing him the ball? Derek Carr. It's not Ben, right? It's Derek Carr. I don't think uh, Ben – How do you think A.B. will do not having a Hall of Fame quarterback – Throwing him the ball. I, I mean, we'll see. I just, for me, the Raiders, I, the Raiders' philosophy was, what was the Raiders? We're going to trade our best player for draft picks, right? Mm-hmm. Not the one of the best players. A, a more impactful player to football than Antonio Brown. Would you agree that Khalil Mack is more impactful to a football game than Antonio Brown? Yes. I, yeah, okay. I agree with that. Okay. So, a better football player, Khalil Mack, than Antonio Brown. We we're going to give up on him. A younger, better football player. We we're going to give up on him, not pay him what he wants mm-hmm. for first round picks. Okay, that you know, if that's the move you're going to make, now it's time to super tank, right? No, now, no, no, no. They're going to get Bosa. Yeah, but I'm saying, but now it's time to super tank is what I'm saying. Like after you trade your best player, yeah. Now we're in rebuild mode. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then we turn around and take Antonio Brown. We trade picks for him. But I can't really be mad at this one, bro, because they traded a fifth-round pick and, a, I believe, a third and a fifth. 
for Antonio Brown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's not terrible. So no. they got good value. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I definitely I think that uh, they got good value. So you can't really ultimately be mad at it. But it's just a little, the philosophy is a little bit different. We're not going to give the money to our superstar defensive end, but we'll give it to a 34-year-old wide receiver. Yeah, no, that's so wild. it's a the philosophy is a little bit different, but ultimately I feel like that you can't really you can't really complain about it because they didn't spend the arm and a leg to get uh, Antonio Brown. So I th- and I think another thing you got you got to think about is just the whole contract situation, right? Antonio Brown, to your point, yeah, kind of nearing the end of his yeah, career, right? Absolutely. So yeah, you're paying him a lot of money in a short time period. Mm-hmm. Khalil Mack would have tied up your money ten years for a hell of a lot longer. So there's a little bit of that going on. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. I just, I I feel like wide receivers, I just don't feel like, obviously I've been, in my whole life, the Eagles have been the most, they've been a good team pretty much my whole life. Not like the best team in the league, but the Eagles have been a competitive team for 25, 30 years, like from now, boom, they have been. And uh, they ha- I've had years with terrible wide receivers, with, with Thrash and Pinkston, and I've seen it get to the point where it's like we are not winning because we don't have a wide receiver. But they were still a good team, but they just that wide receiver. And then when they got T.O., that changed the team. He was oh. that impactful that it changed the team. Now, I, I'll be the first to tell you I think T.O. is the third best wide receiver without question that ever played. And mm-hmm. if he had a head on his shoulders where it wasn't all, always about him, he could have been the best wide receiver that ever yep. played. Yep. You know, and, and I don't think Antonio Brown will ever have that impact that Terrell Owens had, especially in the time back then where there weren't wide receivers all over the place. He was special. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just don't think there's that many wide receivers that can have that big an impact, you know, to where it's worth it, you know, to really make them the cornerstone of your team, really. That's all. I mean, the league's really missing – to your point, they're missing like that T.O. Play. I mean, who who would you say is Terrell Owens? Who who would you say is the best receiver in the league right now? Julio. I mean, it was Antonio Brown. It, I would be hard pressed to put anybody over. Uh, oh, I would be hard pressed to take anybody over Antonio Brown. But Julio is. I, I would still say it's Antonio Brown. He's gonna have to have two years of not being because he wasn't the best receiver in the in the league. If right? you had to play with. One season with the receivers that are in the league right now, how they're playing, who's the best receiver? I think, man, I think you still got to take Julio. Julio Jones. Right. Um, one player that, that obviously is up there, Odell is, is great. I think DeAndre Hopkins is probably in the top I five. Like I like D-Hop. DeAndre Hopkins is very good. I think Odell's overrated. I, I see. I think, yeah, I could say that. I tell you, who's a dog, and like I think Adam Thielen's unreal. I really. Oh no, that, that dude's that dude I is think unreal. Adam Thielen is yep. like I've always said. Like in the beginning of the year when he was going off and he was getting like ten catches, a hundred yards every single game, I was like, yo, he's playing like a top five wide receiver right now, right? That's how I felt. But to me, it was like then he started falling off a little bit. But for me, if I got a fourth and eight and I need to throw somebody the ball, I might take Thielen over everybody mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. for that situation. Mm-hmm. Because you know he's getting past the sticks. Yeah. And you know he's going to find a soft spot He's in the definitely zone. catching the ball. He is going to put himself in a position to get the ball. Yeah. For sure. I, Edelman is not in my top. Edelman's pretty clutch, though. Edelman is clutch. But I mean, the one-hander that he saved the Super Bowl, I mean, come on. Yeah, Edelman's pretty damn tough. But yeah. yeah, Beckham, I don't want to say Beckham's overrated, but I will tell you this. If Beckham never made that wild-ass catch... You're right. If he never made that, which what do you was know the, about him? Which was the best done? catch of all time. It was nobody, ridiculous. Yes, nobody can argue that. <laughs> but if Beckham didn't make that catch, his buzz would not be as yeah, high yeah. as it is, to be oh, honest. Yeah. I really think he's really Facts. good. But he's that, that catch really took him to the point where, oh, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, so I definitely think he's kind of overrated. But, but yeah, I like feeling a lot. And, I mean, shout out to my man Alshon Jeffrey. He got to be in the top ten somewhere. No, you know what I'm saying? come on, man. And Deshaun Jackson. No. I will tell you, the, the Alshon Jeffrey-Deshaun Jackson combo is kind of mean. That's a nice That's a Dude, nice listen, combo. Listen, listen. Take El- Alshon's not even in the conversation as a combo. Alshon's not a combo. What? Alshon was good five, six years ago. Alshon just had a huge Super Bowl, huge playoffs. What are you talking no, about? No, no, no. He's Alshon, done it on the big stage. No, no. Beckham's never done it on the big stage. Listen, you're not put. if we go back to the receiver conversation and you're starting a team, where's Alshon's not even in the top 40 right, receiver. If I'm going to talk about one season right now, he's in the top 40 receiver. Stop. Not top 20 team because he is like 30, 31 years old. Yeah. 
I'm talking about he's as far slow. as one year. He's slow. Oh, El- El- I'm not even. We're not even entertaining yeah, this sure. conversation anymore. I'll tell you what. Deshaun is still a factor. You, you how, mean, is Alshon not a fa- how is Deshaun a factor? Speed, Alshon not? speed, speed. Oh, but catching the ball is not important. And, and catching contested catches. you got to get important. open. He's slow. How is it open? He's still he's slow. Ahead. You want to know how Elshad's getting open? Because he's got Deshaun Jackson running people off. Exactly. It's That's not because of Elshad. Team. It's not because right, of Elshad. First of all, all Elshad's been with the Eagles two years now, and he snapped both years without Deshaun Jackson. With no. Nelson Aguilar running people off. Alshon is washed. But now I'll tell you, if you have Alshon, Deshaun Jackson, and Ertz, that's a mean little that's a mean little passing receiving core, right? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Bruh. Here's what D Jack brings. You got the deep threat, right? Yes. Okay. Teams are gonna take that away. Alshon is not you need him to be able to, to, to make to, to make a difference, right? You need him to as teams are getting double, bra- they're bracketing Deshaun. They're putting two over top of them. Whatever they're doing with him, you can still cover Elshon with one dude. Mm-mm. Yeah, the Patriots didn't do it in the Super Bowl because they said they wanted him to beat him, and he did. And he did. Everybody beat him. They didn't he cover did. anybody in the Super Bowl. He did. And he we did. still got Ertz. Can Ertz be one person? Ertz is Ertz is solid. Ertz is solid. He had like one hundred and twenty-five. Ertz is position. solid. Ertz is solid. So essentially, Elshon is kind of like the third option. Yeah. Is that not a bad third option? I mean, it's... So you think of Madden where he has 87 speed and he can't get over. <laughs> no, That's what you're thinking right no, now. No, no, no. You can take Alshon out of a game with oh, wait, wait, wait. one guy. Odell just got traded to the Browns. Is this is this live and living color right no, now? No, no, it's not. Did this just break? Are we breaking news on the Needed Gaming podcast? Oh! <laughs> All right, Al- Odell is the real deal. Um, he's probably top three receiver in the league right now. I gotta change my whole take on this now. Odell, yeah, he's different. That's crazy. Hey, KD, check in, KD. Wow. Check in, KD. Wow. I know you're in here, KD. <laughs> KD, check in. Who's KD? KD is a huge um, stream supporter and is a huge okay. Giants fan. Okay. Okay. Check in, KD. Wow. That's man, crazy. he looks good in that uni. Baker. Th- oh, wow. Man. That's tough. Damn. You know what? As an Eagles fan, they lose Landon Collins. Now they trade Odell Beckham. I feel good about beating the Giants twice now. Easy. Even with those players, you were beating them twice. Oh, Giants, yeah, for sure. I mean, the Giants as long as awful. Eli's under center, they're terrible. This is, um, this, honestly, this is a big move, not only for real life, but for Madden. The oh. Browns were already a pretty decent Madden yeah, team. Yeah. Not like top tier. But to add 94 speed Odell, you know what I mean? Now you're going to have, like I said, Joe Rice said, you want to have Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham with that David Njoku tight end that's good and fast. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. They could be a decent little man team, especially adding. Um, They're making the playoffs. Trey Fly- no, they added. No, Lions got Trey Fly. They added Olivier Vernon, Sheldon Richardson. So they're, they're going to be a decent. Denzel Ward's still back there. They're des- definitely going to be a decent little man team, man. They got Paraman to Brown. This guy, this guy just told me Brent back onto the Browns. He's holding. <laughs> I like, mean, that's, that's, he's, he's on the screen, bro. No, but he said this. He said this before. Like he's watching the ad oh, and he said that. Probably. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so I'm not upset with that, man. Okay. So, so KD has not checked in yet. Disappointed in KD not checking in. KD will check in. Who else is a huge Giants fan? Oh yeah, let's just add all the Giants fans right here, chat. I know a bunch of them. Let's go. Let's laugh it. Let's just laugh. We're just going to put laughs and then add all my Giants fans. I don't know. Chat, let me know all the Giants fans out there. Oh, let me see. Where is this? So you'll be a pro with this stream stuff one day. Let me show you. Let me go load up the other one. Load up the other one. Right, so, so we're going to go. Whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. You got going there. there. God damn it. Just, just bang. Go here. Click that. Click what? Just click the screen. Yeah, but I don't want. What? Well, you clicked the wrong one. I just put these things around. All right. Just click on the Twitch. Click on the Twitch. All right. Yeah, but so you don't understand. We have a display capture right now. And I hope it's still in the center. All right, we're all right. We're all right. We're all right. You know what I mean? I, it's only. It's okay. Easy. All right. I got you. I got you. All right. Who we at here? Now let's go. We're laughing. I know who we're putting in here. First person we're putting in here. Scomo. No doubt about it. KD. Boom. Come on, chat. Who else we putting in this right here, man? V-Y. V-Y. Yep. Mm-hmm. Stevie J. Yep. Come on, chat. Oh, J-O. J-O is definitely. 
VY, let's get it. Maybe I don't follow him. Yeah, maybe I don't. Who knows? You went wide. You started with Y. Start with V. Oh, shit. Did I? <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Farrell's Man Bible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who else we got, chat? The is whole Ma is Man Bible even still a thing? Man Bible might still be Kinda a thing. Kind of fell off a little bit, right? Jay Bird. Yep. Mm hmm. Come on, chat. You, I know you got more. Fard? Oh, Holly? Oh, yes. Good call. I don't know. Chuck Hollywood pops up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fard. Come on, chat. We got half we got half a little bar left of filling this with names. Or do we just put more laughing faces? Skimbo's not a lion a Giants fan. Come on, let's put some more laughing faces. Spoto is a Giants fan. Alright, Spoto, let's put him in here. Ha ha. That's all we got? I think this is all we got. More laughing faces, you're right. Let's just put more laughing faces. The Browns? The Browns are doing it. <clears throat> How many more laughing faces can we put in here? A lot more. Truzy? Oh, yeah, Truzy. Oh, I mean, I don't want to put Truzy in here. We can put Evil Low in here, though. Mm hmm. Shade Wall. What? Truzy. Oh, yeah, let's put Truzy in here. This is the best part about sports is laughing at other people. Boom. <laughs> no, really, that's why we watch sports is so you laugh at other people. And first, the third, and Jabril Peppers. I really, I think the Eagles should have went and got my Odell Beckham. That would have been tough. Now, if you had Deshaun, Odell, Alshon, and Ertz, that would be tough. That'd be tough. Okay. I mean, Alshon is not, <laughs> has, is not a factor in Alshon what you just said right there. there. He's but. a face catcher. Fart is in here already. Bang. Tweet is out. That's crazy. Oh, they really went there and got Odell. That's, that's going to make the Eagles path a lot easier. It's kind of like the reason why the Patriots are so good every year, they have the easiest path in the world yeah. to get to the playoffs every single year and get a first round bye every single year. That's pretty crazy. You know what I mean? It's like, damn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's going to help the Eagles get better. I think it's going to help their path get easier. And um, it's definitely uh, good news for the NFC East. I was disappointed if um, uh, that Landon Collins went to the Redskins. I was happy that he lost, went to the Giants or left the Giants, but from the little Redskins. But I don't feel the Redskins. I don't fear the Redskins because they traded for Case Keenum. Like, come on, you know what I mean? Like, then the Cowboys lost the wide receiver that kills the Eagles more than anybody in the world, and Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley was unguardable by the Philadelphia Eagles in the last five years. Like every time they needed a third and five, a third and four, third and eight. Cole Beasley got the got the first down. So for the for the, the Cowboys to lose him was a big loss, and I'm very happy about it, man. I really am. Definitely want to go ahead and uh, be happy about them not having Cole Beasley anymore. I know. Uh, what else is there to talk about? The last chance qualifier. Now you're tapping out before you even start on last chance qualifier. I mean, I don't I don't have the funds to. Um, to uh, participate in that, it costs money. Yeah, it costs a lot of money too. Or does it just cost the investment into Madden as your hobby and as something you want to do? I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, for for somebody to not spend a dime and have a good team, Madden Possible. has to be your life. That's to be. All right, this is okay. my question to you: If you played Madden as much as you played Fortnite, how good would your team be? Like a couple hours a night or the weekend you play. I'm Fortnite. not, but uh, all, right, all, right, all right. So, but but here's the thing. Also, what and here's an opportunity for EA, who doesn't listen to shit. Um, I don't want to sit there and grind solo after solo. I, so I want to play solos. the game. I, I want to play I, see, a I human think, being. I don't think you have to play solos. Yeah, I, I think if you play, honestly, you play seasons. I don't seasons have time sucks. for the solo shit. 
So, look, first of all, this from the man. We're not going to talk about your dissecting the game moment from a couple years ago. We're not going. That was when you really fell off, though. <laughs> that is when, yeah, just buy coins. See, Jack, Jack is right now. You could just buy coins. However, but you I can. Feel but this, you can. Yes, you can. You can, but you, it's. Anyways, you can buy coins. But this is how I feel. I feel like if you make Madden something you want to do, if you enjoy playing Madden whether you're playing somebody real good or somebody decent or a head-to-head game, you can make your team good if you invest time into it. Not solo time. A lot of time. We a can, lot of time. I'll tell you this. I think it's it's the most expensive man's ever been to play on Mutt. The most expensive by far. With training points, new player coming out oh every way. Just one it's the most expensive it's been by far. Oh However, my. it is also the easiest way to make coins without buying them this year but to, from Weekend League. If but but here's the thing about Weekend League. Here's the thing about Weekend League, okay? If I were to start playing, we- you have to play that from day one. Absolutely. From yes. day one. That's why I say it. So you got to commit to Madden. I mean, what is this? That's yeah. what are I'm you a Madden player or are you just playing casually? Want- that's the difference. That's where the disconnect is. If you want to compete so, in Madden, right, this right, can't right, be casual. All right, as a Madden pro... Yeah, you want that to to be what you have to do to to compete? Absolutely. You so you want absolutely fucking why? Because I am committed to to put my time, invest not only my money but my time to improve my team from the day the game drops to the ne- day the new game drops. I will invest my time. I will invest my energy to be the best man player in the world. No, I don't want Kent who doesn't invest, who doesn't lock in, who doesn't put the passion, the time, energy into Madden like I do. I don't want you to have a chance to fucking compete. Hell no. Then it'll never be competitive. Why? Because it's it. Man is what super weekend league is and what salary cap weekend league has become is who can invest the most time or who can invest the most money. But what what what's this is and this is where I ask you. What competitive thing in the fucking world is different than that? Give me something where you don't have to spend money and you don't have to spend time and you can still be top in the field at. I mean, what's what? What if I'm born golf six foot nine? Golf, no. Okay. I mean, what? Okay, you're born six foot nine. Do you not nine. have to play basketball? <laughs> do you not have to invest? I got time? A, a, a hell of a head start. Oh, but I'm saying, but do you still have to invest time? There's plenty of six nine motherfuckers okay, okay, out okay. here, okay. AKG, right? Okay, that okay, is okay. Not right, right, I'm going to take your example. I'm going to take your example, okay? Golf. I'm going to take your example. The the, the 5 foot 11 160 pound kid, he can invest as much time uh, uh, more than anybody. Yeah. Is he ever going to make it to the league? Possibly. Absolutely. Possibly. Possible, yeah. Probably but, not. But, okay. but probably you're, not. This is you're using Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, like, just hold on, just hold on. Probably not. No, okay? not at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but the kid that plays Madden 24-7 is now competing, okay? Yes, because uh, that's a big commitment. Okay. Now, if you take his team away from him, is he able to compete? Probably not. So my point is, it's not about me versus you. It's it's not chess. It's not even checkers anymore. It's who's spending the most time, who has the better team, is going to win a majority of their games. Okay. If you have I the disagree. better team than me, and, and and we're equal players, you will win. I disagree. Oh, if you're equal players. If we're equal so, players. So now, okay. <laughs> now my point is, do you think the players that win belts are the people that spend the most money on men? No. Okay. Explain it then. So, do you think Skimbo spends more money than anybody else in men? But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I I I feel like I could. Not saying that I'm I'm on that level whatsoever, but am I? Can I compete with that level of player? Yes, but the time that it would take for me to be able to compete with them, I don't have it. I don't want to spend that okay. much time. But I well, still want to. I still want to be able to pick up the game and still be able to compete with somebody. What? what how can you expect that? I mean, that's why. We, that's why that's I like saying it's really name. like saying, bro. I, I want to play golf. I want to compete with the best players at my club or at my, you know, my... No, I want to play checkers or, or, or chess for that matter. Everybody knows how to play chess, so let's play chess. No, it's I don't want to pick it up bad. and have to have spent the last six months getting my team to this point to be able to compete. What? But it would be the same thing if it was regs. If you... Say you... Even if it was regs, it was regs. a, a short yeah, of C4. That, this is great. It's a C4 tournament, right? Yep. yep. You got Skimbo, you got Kiv. Play all day or study the game like nobody else. Yeah. They really do, right? 
They know the game way more than I know the game, right? Yep, yep. So you think you no money there's no money involved. Right. You think I can I can pick the game up casually and fucking compete with guys that put their whole time and so, energy and dissect so the game? I, I don't feel like I'm a in that situation I wouldn't be a casual player. Well, what would you I'd be? I'd be more invested because it doesn't require the time and the money commitment to compete. Okay, so you would be more invested. You would spend more time playing the game when you didn't have to spend more time playing. I don't understand. So you don't want to spend time playing the game, but if it was free, I would spend I feel, more time I feel playing like right now, I feel like where the game's at, where Madden's at right now, every Saturday or Sunday that goes by that I don't play Madden all flipping day long... I'm now falling behind. It's not okay. because somebody got better at the game than me. Okay. It's because my team isn't up to par. No, but see, I, I, I think it's both. I think it's absolutely both. If you don't play the game, you will fall off on Madden. Simple and plain. I really think that. And it's just like it's just like basketball. It's like if you got you know somebody that's not in the gym all day and wants to show up at the court, or the guy that's been in the gym all week getting shots up, he's going to perform better. Do you, do you disagree with that? Somebody that puts that much work in that some of these guys do that win belts, it's not in, all about in your, spending in money. In your situation with regs, I buy into that. Not wow. with weekend league, not with salary cap. But but weekend league, it's a way to play the game that you're playing anyway. Twenty five games of Madden in four days is is it, that you got to play Madden. It's not something casual, but you, but it's not OD. Do you know what I mean? It's like in between. Like if you really enjoy playing Madden, you should be able to play five games a day, right? Do you, am I wrong about that? Yeah. And you have to understand that we are old as shit compared to most of these kids. Exactly. exactly. So it's and like so it, that, and so that that that's for me is why it's been so hard to still keep up with. Men. Okay, and that's what you have to realize: the shit is not for you. It's not for people with jobs. Right. Sure, it's not for sure. people with families. It's not for people with careers. It's not, and that's okay because you know who it's for: the pro fucking Madden players. So so we're saying so we're saying in order to be a pro Madden player. You have to basically every waking hour be no, playing it's not Madden. Every Madden. It's Pretty not much, every waking hour. Pretty but, much. But to an extent, it is. Yes. That's where it's at right now. Has to be your job. Yes, that is how every esport is. Am I wrong? Uh, so, so but, but just every, if, if it were on regs, we're talking. We're talking. It's a completely different conversation. Fortnite is regs. Everybody has an equal playing field. It is skill based. It is that person getting more jump shots in there. It's all right. All right. All right. Here's what salary cap and what mutt is is. Oh, hey, I- I'm playing this. I'm getting my coins now. To use your basketball analogy, I'm not able to dunk on a ten foot hoop. But, well, my hoop is nine but, but now my my hoop's eight foot. I see. I don't think my hoop's I, I see, seven I, foot. I honestly don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it is. I don't. Oh think, my god, yes. I I could take. Listen. I, I could take, you give me $500, right? Right now, from fucking scratch. You give me $500, and I'll be able to compete with any salary cap team out there. 500 bucks. That might be a lot. And there's nobody that would beat me that's actually just because their team is that, better. I mean, that's not a lot. It is a lot, and it's more than what it should be. Oh, it should. Compete. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we got to get but, past that point. But of where it's though. at today... Five hundred dollars is not a lot of money to have a competitive team. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. But this is my point. Whatever I need, I don't know if it's two hundred, three hundred, whatever it may be. I can get that, and I can compete because I'm that good at the game, and I can put that much time into the game to where I can compete, and I won't lose a salary cap game because my team is not good enough. Straight mutt? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. you will get your ass beat right. in weekend league. Right. You will run into some bum ass players that are beating you because their team is old D. Right. But that being said, even with a salary cap team, if you're a decent enough player, you should be able to win 20 games on weekend league and get your 400k every weekend league. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much how I feel about it. And and as far as like people complaining, because Vilma does the same same shit all the time. It costs money to play mutt. First of all, if you if you start at the beginning of the year, like you said, even if you don't play every weekend, you play every third weekend. By this time of the year, your team is halfway decent. You'll have a coach Madden. You'll have all these fucking tokens. You'll have all this shit. Okay, all right. This time of year, right now, what what tournament? I guess the last chance the last qualifier. Chance qualifier. So for thirty two spots, I just spent all that time to try to get to. Well, the top first of all, you have to like when the Madden salary too, cap man. mode was relevant and where it was whatever. You don't have that runway to build up this team. Yeah, but so you gotta spend money. Oh, or you but, gotta but spend at the same every time, weekend. And you're talking about the beginning of the year. Yeah. Right? yeah. But at the same time, the the drastic difference in team is not that big. 
You know what I'm saying? If you spend two hundred dollars the first week and buy two bundles, your team will be pretty decent compared to everybody else. Do you right. agree with that? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But now, if you try to start right now, that's how them would be trying to do. Let you mean I want to start building a team? Now you're like, fuck, this is right. too hard. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But if you start early in the year, you don't need to spend buku bucks to compete because everybody's team is pretty shitty early in the year. And that's why I think the EA model of how they're going about these things is broken because you only have so much of a runway in which a smart, intelligent person, like you just highlighted, the beginning of the year is where I'm going to spend my money. Yeah. At the end of the year, it's a waste of I'm, I will never catch up. I cannot catch up to compete on Mutt Weekend League unless I played from day one. Yeah, but and ultimately we have to step back and realize that we are here because we like playing Madden. Like, right. I played Madden, you played right. Madden when it was for so, fucking so, so, nothing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And I would and, still and, play the and, game if it was for nothing. I would, too. Yeah, and so I, it's like... And I would play. hop on the game right now if I felt like I could hop in a game and compete with somebody. I don't have the team to compete, so I don't play Madden But anymore. that's your fault. That's your fault. Because, one, you don't like the game as much as you like playing Fortnite or whatever you may do in your life that, that I, I, don't, I would rather do this than play Madden. And that's where, that's ultimately where the problem is. Because we always play Madden because it's fun. Fuck the competing. We played that shit. I played Madden more when that shit was for nothing. Playing you, playing Elite, playing Vilma. I done played Vilma more than anybody in my whole life. And that was never for nothing but shit talking. Right. That's it. Right, right, right. So it, at the end of the day, it's like, uh, you pretty much do this shit just because it's fun. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much where the disconnect is. If you're not having fun, of course it's going to suck. And it's going to seem like a chore. It's going to seem like, you know what I'm saying, I'm spending my money for something that's not paying me back. But ultimately, man, I... I and we have to get old. Like, man, it's going to cost money. That They're not going anywhere from this much shit. That's just not going anywhere. So if you want to compete in man, you want to go ahead and try to make these stages, you got to invest your time and your money in your team, just like you have to invest your time and your money into anything else that you compete in in this entire world. There's nothing you can compete in without spending time and money, period. But I just need one example that doesn't take time or money or mostly both to compete in. I get where you're going with it, but it's it's not the same thing. Why not? Because so so, so, so hear me out. If let's just go back to your first week, your, your first month of the game that comes out, right? Yeah, we all got the same playing field. The guy that spends two thousand dollars in that first couple months, I don't have a shot at beating him. Yes, if I don't lie. spend money, if no, I don't spend money, I do lie. not have a shot. I do not have a shot. That's a lie. The average player doesn't have a shot. The average player is not Oh, and that's shot. what separates the average fucking player from a Madden fucking pro. <laughs> there you go. But, all right, but hold on. Give a Madden pro that team. And you all right, give Skimbo the $2,000 team. Give you the, the bullshit team that you're grinding for for that first couple of weeks. Okay, you don't have a shot versus okay, that team. And this is what I say. I'm a Madden pro. What the fuck am I look like letting somebody else spend that money? <laughs> I'm going to invest my damn self because I can win with this shit. If I'm good enough to win, if I'm good enough to compete, why the fuck would I not invest in my team? That's my question to you. If I'm WWE, I'm good enough to make X, Y, and Z live event, I know this going into the year. I already know I'm good enough in Madden. I already know I'm a top 20 man player every single year. You you are, yeah. Exactly. So, this is what I'm saying. If I know that, you damn fucking right. When I download the game, the first thing I'm doing is buying a bundle. You are, yes. Exactly. That's why, Madden, this is something that if you're a pro, it's fucking good for you. Do you how, how many pros are there? How many pros are there? Uh, 40, 30, 40? 30, maybe. Let's just say it's 25. Good. I want these those same guys playing every fucking year. That's the skill gap, Ken. No. This is the skill gap they no. say not there. The There's same no. 30, 40 people that keep winning because they're that fucking good at the game. I don't, I don't, I disagree. I disagree. Wow. I disagree because, because I, and it comes from a different side of things. I am not able to put in the time to have that okay. team. That's why you're not a Madden pro. But why should that keep me from being a Madden pro? Because what profession can you be the top at and not invest your time in? Talk to me. Which one? Chat, give me There's one no thing that you can compete in Here's and not invest your time in. Here's the thing. He's, he's going here with this, but he, not even, he doesn't even believe what the hell he's saying. I believe right it now. full-heartedly. No. There's nothing. No. There is nothing out there that you can play and compete in and not spend your money on. Or your time. Does you, what did you compete in your life? What, what was your Kent's competition? You was a kicker in high school. How much time did you kick, <laughs> kick in the football? How, how much time did you spend kicking the football? Much, not much. All right, much. but whatever. You played DB and wide receiver, right? Yeah, yeah. But you put some time in on that, right? 
I mean, I've showed up for practice. Exactly. Because yeah. because why? Because you wanted to compete, right? Right, right, right. right. And at some point, you ran into some guy that was com- practicing a little bit more. But, but you, you want to know what happened? When I went out in the field, it was me versus the guy across from me. Okay. It wasn't, oh, I spent a couple more he thousand dollars than you did, so I'm getting cleats. this win today. I mean, I see. I don't think it's like that. That's, that's it is what it's like. Okay, but it's, it's kind of like okay. He can buy all the cleats to make him run a little faster, right? It's kind of like that. He can buy gold cleats. He got point speed, point of no, speed, right? No. That's kind of no. like much. Okay, no. he got the gold cleats. He got the gold gloves. He catch the ball better. You gotta cover him, right? But if you know you're good enough. To cover him, if you buy the gold cleats and the gold gloves, you would buy that shit because then you can cover him, right? No, no, you're reaching, you're reaching. And at the same things. time, even if he has the gold gloves and the gold hat, you're good enough. You're Kent the corner. You're good enough to <laughs> fucking cover anybody, even if they have you're the damn gold gloves right. and you're the damn gold right. shoes. So that's pretty much. I mean, dude, I just feel like. Man, you got to invest your time or you have to invest your money. And if you don't have the time to invest or you don't have the money to invest, right, let, let me ask you, you will not compete. Let me ask you this. And for somebody like me who has both the time and the money to invest, yes, I want it that way. Because I want to say, if I want to put my heart into this game, I'm going to win money because I'm good enough and I'm invested enough. Why should somebody like me that's good enough, invested enough, not be able to win money consistently for men? What is the problem with that? Okay. If you had to pick one. Which one would you say should be weighted more heavily with being successful at the game? I think ultimately time is weighted more. Absolutely. Because you have to get good at the game. You can just buy your team and not be good at the game. But if you're you're better off with a with a no money spent team investing your time getting good at the game than not playing the game a lot and having the best team. That's how I feel about it. Hmm. Yeah. So you want it so you think it's okay. Year after year, that you have to now spend, you you have to. I mean, it's, it's not, not an not option. Okay. It's not an option that you have to spend thousands of dollars, or risk buying coins on you know wherever you go I buy mean, coins yeah. and getting caught by EA, which then is still like you're still having to invest a decent amount of coin in that, and then to just get ripped from you because you violated the terms of service. Yeah, it sucks. That, that's so, that's a that's a risky path. So. Year after year, you want to have to spend thousands of dollars to play and compete in a game that you used to be able to enjoy and compete in for nothing. I'm not agreeing with that at all. Other than your time, but no, no, I think I, I think it sucks. I think ultimately, yeah, it's pretty shitty. Yeah, but me, we have to realize that that shit not going nowhere. No matter how much we complain about it, much not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's their cash cow. For they, these entire it, cash cow. It, it is not going to go anywhere. But I think. The competitive landscape in Madden, if it continues this way, you're going to stick it out for a little while. There's going to come a point in time where you're like, Jesus, like this isn't worth the time and the money that it's required to still enjoy this hobby. That's why you're going to walk away from the game more so than you just don't enjoy the game anymore. I mean, I think where I'm at right now, I'm never going to walk away from the game. But I think... It's only going. The only way you could ever complain is if random people just start popping up all over winning. That hasn't happened. You know, as much as we talk about skill gap, show me where the random fucking people are winning. That's what I want to ask. Show me where the random kids are beating good players because of their team. Show me where the randoms are making runs in tournaments because the game sucks. As much people complain about skill gap and how it caters to bums, show me these bums. Give me an example. <laughs> That's what I ask. I ask chat. I ask YouTube. I ask you. Give me one example of somebody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, is somebody that, that is a bum that the game caters to and only wins because their team is better. That's pretty much what I'm asking. I want that example. But, but the problem is that everybody that you see in these tournaments, it's, they're good at the game. They're good at the game. Why? Because they invest a lot of time and they play the they, game. They invest a lot they of time. The and they've been playing this for, for, for decades. Absolutely. So that they've been at at the at, at the pinnacle for some time. They've been now they have to to do that. They have to spend money. There is no way or I, I, a I, I, shitload I, I, of time grinding solos. No one no one plays solos, Ken. No one plays solos. Or, or, or playing... Weekend League playing season. Well, all right, all right. Do you Even want... playing draft champions, if you go 6-0, and oh, that's a cool 120K or something. Right there. Playing draft champions. If you're good enough at the game, if you are an elite man player, you can make coins just playing the game. Period. Why is that? Unfa- I, I just don't understand how you don't understand that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
You can. You can make coins. And the game and the the, the layout is completely catered to full time Madden players. It com- I, I 100%. And honestly, what esport is not catered is not more beneficial to be full time playing the game. I want to say, there's not somebody that goes to work all fucking day, 9 to 5, then comes home and play Call of Duty and is the best Call of Duty player in the world. Do you think that's the case? No. Do you think that's the case for Fortnite? Do you think fucking Tifu goes and works all day and then comes home and busts people's ass in Fortnite? No. no. Why are these dudes so fucking tough? Because they spend their life on the game, right? Yeah. That's how man is. Yeah, and what is wrong with that, I'll ask you. There's nothing wrong with okay. that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think to appeal to a broader audience and to keep... Uh, the longevity of the the game is dead. The game is dead. It is That's March. What, does that mean? what I'm is saying dead. is, due to this new model of of, of mutt and salary cap, and where you're requiring a lot of time or a lot of money to play and be able to compete, all I want to do when I pick up my Madden controller is know that I have a fair chance based on me versus you, not. Shit, I didn't spend all fucking weekend. Go play I didn't spend a lot of money. Okay, then be a race player like Vilma. That's what I'm saying. Vilma. Nobody plays regs. The, Vilma wins money on regs. What ladder? What ladder can I qualify in regs? I, I will tell you. There this, isn't one. They have completely did a disservice for there not being a la- regs ladder. Yeah. Draft champions is pretty much free. You know what I'm saying? It, it, draft champions is pretty much free. That's why that ladder is always fun. You know, without a top four. I think draft champions is the best mode. I this year I would I would probably agree draft champions is the best mode. However, the belt is still half a belt. We will just because it's the best mode. The salary cap belt is still one belt. The draft champions belt is half a belt. Unless are we making a ruling that draft champions belt this year is one belt is a full belt? I think draft champions this year is a full belt. Chat years past I agree with you. Beast mode was half a belt. Beast mode was half belt. What about Mo when he ran every play the first draft champion? I think Mo get half a belt because one he got the qualified to get there. He got the free qualification to be that's in half, a belt. That's half, half a belt. Mo is half, half a belt. Yep. Beast mode half a belt. Half a belt. And club clubs don't count as belts, right? No clubs count. The belt counts. Like the live event, like to make to win. I won my club. That's not necessarily a live event. That, I, that's what I'm talking about. If you win your club, that's not like are we counting that as? If you win your club, I think that means I made a live event. All right, but it, it's not a belt. No, the belt still count. Like Ghost Belt, even though he beat, he only beat Problem. That was the only person he beat. He kind of he beat Safa, uh, but the belt counts. But like as far as live event, I mean, it doesn't. I, I don't really know how we we didn't even make a ruling on that. Hmm. So we'll see. I was somebody somebody has to make a ruling on that eventually. Winning, win, the club belt is definitely the belt because Poppin beat a lot of good people on that run. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there's that, a lot, a lot of guys that didn't people. have to play anybody that that. To win their, their belt, club. yeah, to win the club, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not talking about winning the club. I'm yeah. talking about after that when Poppin won them five, six games in a row. Yeah, that counts. Some good players. No, that absolutely. counts. That counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but so. winning your club doesn't count. Yeah, that's no winning your club is a live event. If you win the club, that equals a live event. Even though it's top 32, most live events is top 16. So. What do you think? So you think you have to be in the top sixteen? It's a little. It, it's a. It means something, but it it's watered down a little bit, just a touch. I I agree. I don't like just people bragging about winning the club. Yeah, That's yeah. why for me, when Spoto was snapping last week, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, you're not getting cool points for winning no. Indianapolis club. No, That's no, really no. you don't even like put that on. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. I I think, and they say there's a lot of luck involved in Madden, right? Madden's yes. lucky. Seabull yes. says this all the time. He's saying yes. in the chat right now. Yes, lucky. Madden is luck. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say there's any other games that involve luck? Like, I, I feel like every video game to an extent is kind of lucky, is it not? When you say Fortnite. I mean, I don't really play any other games. No, but, so let's, say, but let's say Fortnite, right? Fortnite. Okay. We both land at Tilted. Yeah. I go on top of one build, I get a bandage. You gonna, you get a, a purple shotgun. Is that not lucky? Talk uh, to me. That, that, is, that is lucky. However, however... Provided we both got the same weapon, I do not believe at that point then a person can luckily beat the other. I guess there's a little bit involved in, you know, a headshot, you know, maybe you were four pixels left and it counted as 196 and the other guy put it right on the button and it was 200. That's a little lucky, but there was still skill to put it in that spot. Oh, yeah, for sure, but I, I personally think skill Fortnite is like, at close to Gears of War as far as I thought Gears of War as far as shooting game 
if someone was really tough at Gears of War, you couldn't fuck with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Gears of that's War... That's how Fortnite is. That's yes, Fortnite that's how Fortnite is. That's how I feel now. And yeah, pretty yeah. much everybody in the world is better than me. And if I run into somebody, I lose. Yeah, yeah. Th- If they see me, I lose. Yep. And Call of Duty is different. But I feel like Call of Duty, anybody can kill anybody. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you can hide somewhere. Even in Fortnite, you can't really even hide somewhere and pop right. out on somebody right, unless right, you're, right. like, behind a door with a shotgun. Right. So, Fortnite is definitely... And I think that's why it's so successful is that there is such a... I, I, and I, I think there's a huge skill gap in Madden. The difference between Madden and Fortnite is this. Is that you watch all these pros play a bunch of bums all fucking day. Right? Yeah, yeah. And there's joy. There's intrigue in watching Ninja fuck up a bunch of kids. Because it's funny. And you be like, damn, he's tough as shit. I could go play head-to-head on Madden and play regular-ass people, right? Mm-hmm. And blow them the fuck out. If there was as many people playing Fortnite as there were in Madden, the cream would still rise to the top, and I would blow people the fuck out just like Ninja kills people, traps them, makes them look stupid all the time, right? right? Yep, yep. And I think I think just like there's no skill, they say there's no skill gap in Madden, when you get to those top Fortnite guys, I feel like they're all pretty similar. You know what I mean? Whereas mm-hmm. just like Madden, how the top Madden guys are all pretty similar, anybody can win and when you throw the ball on the field. That's how I feel about Fortnite. Am I wrong in saying that? Uh... There's just Madden. You, when you get to that level, how often, how often when you get to that level, and we watch these games and these tournaments, do we walk away thinking that player A beat player B or player B beat player A, or are we more often saying player A got cheated, player A fumbled, player B didn't? Player B caught it on three guys. Player A didn't. Well, like that, it see, gets to that level, and it, it, it that's why. Yes, yeah, skill gap. The, the the pro is going to beat up on the bum every single time. Yes, but when you get to that competitive level, there isn't enough skill gap there to separate people. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think there is. I think. He, he, here's the deal. It, like these tournaments, if if you ran that tournament ten times, would you have uh, the same maybe three or four players consistently placed in the top or would it be pretty randomized it would be ran- especially like like the clubs for example it's 32 people it would probably be a different finish every single time every single time and I feel the same way for Fortnite if you tie the top 32 players in the world and play solos I think it sure would sure but would there be like probably a core four or six that were well, I think, always I think at Madden the top like I think man absolutely could be like that you know what I mean I haven't seen it yet you know I feel like <clears throat> Fortnite could be the same way. Okay, now, damn, I didn't get the rotation in the circle. Just like, damn, I didn't get that catch on the sideline. Bang, now I'm going to die. Or bang, now I'm going to lose. It's, all, it's always some uncontrollable thing. And honestly, as much as you hate that as a man player and people want to blame you, that's from a, the naked eye, from the regular person that watches Madden, that's the shit that makes you watch. That's the shit that makes the shit entertaining. That's what makes football entertaining. And there's some disconnect in what makes football entertaining and what we want in Madden. Because the random shit in football is what makes it exciting. You know, that's what makes you watch the game, essentially. And that's what makes football better than pretty much any other sport. Immaculate reception, the ball bouncing all over the place. Like you said, Edelman's one hand fucking catch to save the game. Mm-hmm. That's the exciting shit in football. You know, that's, that's why people watch. Mm-hmm. You know, in Madden, we don't want none of that. But at the same time, we want a million people to watch. You know, it's like, where is the disconnect? Because we're watching to see who's going to fumble, who's going to make a crazy-ass play, who's going to break a sack, who's going to break a tackle, who's going to catch an interception. You know what I mean? That's what you want to see. What do you want? We don't want to see somebody doing 10 flat routes for six yards every single fucking time and scoring. Like, like, honestly, really, there has to be some type of randomness in football. Honestly. Why does it have to be random, though? Because it's random. Why does it have to be random? Why can't they put mechanics in the game in which I, as the user outperformed whatever I tried to do in that situation. Why can't I throw like like take 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 rocket catching or, or strafe catching back in the day, right? Yeah. It was OP, but what if there was a mechanic in which it was a user versus user that determined that outcome versus I threw it and me as a de- I'm I'm in a perfect position to make a play as a defender, but you know what? I he got the, an animation. I am completely out of control of what's going to happen here. Why does it have to be that way? I mean, honestly, the thing with mm-hmm. Rocket Catch was I love was that you could. That's one way you could. As much as we talk about beating bums, the Rocket Catch was a way you could blow somebody out by a hundred points. 
between Rocket Blitz and Nan- Rocket Catcher and Nano Blitzen, you could blow out Bazooka Joe by 100 points. Like your wife could come in here and, and I, the, if we play bad, the mo- if we just play a four minute quarter game bad against your wife, I might win 42 to zero, right? Mm-hmm. But between back in the day with Nano Blitzes and Rocket Catching, it's 200 to zero. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you're right that the Rocket Catch, all the stuff like that that was user involved, really, they and that's them essentially wanting everybody to be able to compete. Your, your Bazooka Joe ass that want to pick up the controller every corner, that's why they, that's the people that want to compete. They make the game easier. Because when the game is easier, more people will play it. Okay, so now, so now, all right, all right. So, you started out saying that Madden has skill gap. So now we come a full circle. Now we're saying Madden doesn't have oh, skill Oh, not gap. at all. Madden has a huge skill gap. But at the same time, when you go down to the players that bitch a lot about Madden, they're always posting clips about Madden and casual fucking players, hell no, there's no skill gap. All you guys are the same. So if you're an average ass fucking player, but up, I'm talking. My point is, when you get as good as I am, or as good as the top fifty players in the world, there's a huge skill gap. But the Bazooka Joe Kent that wants to pick up his controller at once a month, yes, there's no fucking skill gap. You're gonna lose to another Bazooka Kent over and over. Like, I, and, and I don't mind losing if I feel like that player was better than me. But when he catches, like when I'm in a hell game and it's tie ball game and it comes down to inside two minutes and you know wh- whatever the situation is and he throws chucks it up and there's oh, three you dudes put, you and he catches on, it on yeah, on yeah. On that was that, that, so I clicked on I had no control of that player that's not skill gap you're right the, 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 yeah but that's that's the game now and ultimately for the game to grow that's not skill gap okay it, it, there's a huge skill gap like first of all in that situation when you're that far behind you always got to slot swat and personally, he should have dropped the He should have dropped Yeah, but at the end of the day, that person, that play, you did have a terrible matchup on the field. Right? It was a terrible matchup. Can we say yes, it was a terrible matchup? On paper, sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he was closer than he should have been. But at the end of the day, when you get your linebacker mossed by one of the best receivers in the mode, I mean, wouldn't you want that to happen in real life? Like, if, if you were a Colts fan and they put a linebacker on T.Y. Hill, wouldn't you expect T.Y. Hill to make a play? Listen, yeah. We're getting we're getting way too in the weeds with this specific example. For what occurred on the play that we are referencing, I don't believe I had a bad play call. If the if the receiver would have run any other route in that situation, yes, that linebacker should get roasted. But when I'm having my linebacker off the ball inside, and you throw just a snap streak and he's literally standing in the circle where the ball's going to land and I can't make a play because that's a 92 versus an 86. I mean, come on. I mean, I think there's a skill gap in Madden. There was a bigger skill gap 10 years ago when the user mattered. Huge bigger skill gap back in the day. But there still is a skill gap. That's why the same people keep winning. And like you said, these same people at these months, they're not the players that spend the most money. I would probably tell you they'd probably play the game more than anybody, and as they should. It's what they want to do, you know. I, I still want you challenge you to come up with some profession where you don't have to invest your time, your money, and still be and still be top level elite. At. I have no p- problem spending time or money, but but what I have a problem with is that it, it it's it requires too much of it. That that that's where I'm at with it. To be good and competitive in Madden, it requires way too much time to, to do that. Um, okay, but what? I just, I just can't think of a, a profession that you can't say that about. All right, all right let me ask you: how, how many hours? How many hours a week? If if you're being honest with yourself, do you think the average competitive Madden player spends playing the game? Not not like not like top like like. Top two hundred players. How much? How many? How many hours a week do you think they're spending? I don't know. I'd probably say four or five hours a day. Four or five hours a day. That's a lot of time. I mean, it's, what, it's a lot it's of time. Like what? The, it's like what? Okay. That's what they do. The though. problem is. The problem is. Let's say you miss a Saturday and a Sunday. You, you went out and you went on a little vacation, or you went to go yeah. see some family, and then next weekend something else comes up, and you, you know, you're going yeah. to well, watch a volleyball tournament okay. all weekend, or whatever yeah. it may be. And there's a few weekends that go by. I am now. I, I might have still been playing, you know, throughout the week. Maybe I probably logged that five yeah. hour a day. I agree. 
But my team is now so far behind to when it's I'm playing, so when I do let's, come back, I cannot compete with those players. Let's, let's not so far behind. And I'll tell you, I haven't been on a game in a week, and I won't be on a game in a week. And the one thing about that's good about it, Michael Vick came out, right? Mm-hmm. When my, if I was playing the game Michael Vick came out, I would spend $200 to get Michael Vick. Now, two weeks later, I'm hopping back on the game. Michael Vick going to be 400 k So I can spend $20 to get Michael Vick. That is a positive about the situation. But this is, and that's like any other professional. Like, if we're golfers, right, and you take a couple weeks off, you know what I'm saying? And now I am keep playing, I keep playing, I'm going to be that much better than you. Because you because you acquired a skill. You didn't acquire a, a higher rated player. But I think I think the skill in the game matters more than the player. 1,000%. No, I will never lose to somebody because their team is better than mine. One, I, I, that is that we can prove this out. You you are way better at Madden than than I am. Okay, thousand percent. If you got an all gold team and I got an all red team, elite team, oh, we're winning. I'm winning that game. No, you're not. Yes, I am. It's not. Happening. Yes, I am. I just don't. I just I just don't think it matters as much as you guys do. And I think the players like you that can be decent in the game. But choose not to put the time. I think way too many people use that as an excuse and use that as the reason why they no longer compete. I think a lot of the old heads in the community use that as a, as an excuse because they realize, damn, I'm not as good as I used to be. Damn, fuck this much shit is corny. You know what I mean? And I think way too many people use that as an excuse when in actuality it's really not that big a deal. If you play Madden and you want to play Madden, you can compete. All right, all right, here's your question for you. If it went back to regs as the competitive mode, do you think we would have new faces or the same Fuck faces? No. It had rakes. We have a race tournament where you can show up at the door and play. Who won? So hold on, hold on. We didn't have an online deal. We didn't have. I haven't had an oh, online we had to show up and play. So we some, had one so, last year. So again, somebody has to have okay, the money okay, to get to the event. Okay, if you had the money to get to a fucking event, I get it. I'm then, with then you there. you're not I'm a man player. I'm you're not you a man player. I'm with you. Go there. do something but else. But not, not, not everybody does. Okay, well then they're not a fucking man player. God bless your heart. If you don't have the money, if you want to be a man player and you don't have the money to go to Vegas, sell your fucking Xbox and pay your rent. That's pretty much how I feel. You're not going to be a pro man player. Sell that fucking dream, dude. Or if you're that good, go play ten games on Saloon, win two hundred dollars, book a little a spirit flight. Boom. Seriously. Like, I, uh, that's that's outrageous. So, all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, so if we went to, like, a regs um, ladder online. It would be awesome. They definitely should have a regs ladder. It's it, injustice. Do you think there would be new faces or the same Absolutely faces? Absolutely not. It will be the same faces. It would be the same faces. Absolutely. I disagree. How? I think there would be there would be a lot of new faces. Who? You'd have Vilma. You'd have Siwoo. You'd have... Who can't play regs? Who needs his team? Because he, he needs his team. team. Needs oh, okay. okay. Might be right. All right, all right, all right. Who needs his team? Number four, they really should have a race leaderboard. And I, they don't do it because, one, they want to sell their cards. Mutt isn't going nowhere. You know, and if you want to be a man player, you want to play man. I disagree. Mutt I, is not going anywhere. I think it has a shelf life. I think It in doesn't. A, I think in five years, it'll be a totally different model. I, and, and this is where I'll tell you why. Mm. It's because... They try to employ this type of model with every game that comes out. And legally, they can't do it. Because there's so many laws now about what they can sell and what they can't sell. That in the Mutt situation was grandfathered in before these these laws came about. So they can get away with a lot more bullshit on Mutt than they can on their Star Wars game. Than they can on whatever games they put out now. That they're trying to push this pay-to-play type thing or pay for you know microtransactions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Mutt, they can still do it. And what are they going to do while they can still do it? Milk the shit out of it as much as they can. And they're going to continue to milk the hell out of it. So if you want to compete in Madden and you want to you know, be a pro Madden player, this is something you want, you have to invest in this shit. And I tell them this shit all the time that, like, bro, if, you wanna, if you're X amount, best player, I'm, the, I'm, I'm good this year, blah, 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 invest in the game. Put your time in it. And it, and it drives me crazy that someone, because Vilma's good at the game. And if he would invest his time, he'd be right there. He could have, like I said, he lost one game to get the club. He could have, he could win so much more if he invested more time into mutt, into draft champions, into everything like that. If he really practiced his craft and really put his heart into it and grind this shit, you know, not just play the regs for C fours and fucking player lounge money, you know. I, and that's what made. And so if you want to win and you want to compete at this shit, you have to embrace mutt. You know, the attitude of this sucks because i got to pay for my team. No one that's winning fucking Madden tournaments has that mentality. 
Do you agree with that? Nobody says this sucks. I gotta pay for my team blah blah blah. blah. Nobody winning has that shit. Period. Mm. They're doing what they have to do. They're buying coins. They're grinding weekend league, whatever it may be. They're they're gonna have a good enough team and they're gonna compete. Period. If you use it as an excuse, it will always be an excuse. Period. I'm different than y'all. I don't know. I know I'm good enough at the game. I know. I, first of all, I was playing Mutt before it was even qualifying mode because the shit's actually pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I was Honestly, too. I was it too. really, it really was cool. It has gotten ridiculous. It has gotten overboard when they start all the players with 82 speed, so you have to keep buying a player. Mm -hmm. They really maximize the amount of money you have to spend. Mm -hmm. Where man 17 or man 16 when Paraman played the whole year because he had 97 speed, mm -hmm. it was a lot better. But um, honestly, definitely think uh. Um, it's really, you got to embrace Mutt. That's pretty much how it is. I mean, it's not going anywhere. If you want to play Madden, you got to play Mutt. If you want to play Regs, God bless your heart. Your limit is going to be money games on Players Lounge and Saloon. Players Lounge, hit that link in my chat. Players Lounge, go ahead. And um, C4 tournaments. That's that's your ceiling. There's one Regs tournament a year. Skimbo won both of them. So tell me where the skill gap's going to come out when people can play Regs online. That's what, I, I, I just want to see... Who the, who the new face from Regs is going to be? I think there'll be more people in the mix. I, I don't think so at all. <clears throat> oh, well. All right. How are we going out here? Um, Where are we at? Yeah, we've been here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we started rapping. And that's what it's about. This is Kent. He used to be a man player. Now he's a Fortnite player. Now he's pro um, foot, pro for Fortnite. Are we gonna get some representing needed games or something? Yeah, we we'll throw the stream up. We can throw the stream up. Can you know, we get some last stuff. chance grind? I don't, I don't have the team, or I'll tell oh them. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. Like anybody want to donate players? No, we don't ask for donations on the stream. This is a legitimate man oh. stream. <laughs> I'm saying we don't come in here and right, ask for that donations. Right, that right, that right. Oh my God! The wife six one four is not subbed or is not sorted up. This is crazy. Man, I gifted her a sub not too long ago. Oh my gosh! The wife six one four. She has a picture and everything. Oh yeah, my God! Yeah. Last oh the the new podcast is already on YouTube. I have to just make it public. I will do that when I get back to my um my home away from home. Uh, D four went to the Niners, but Kent is yeah. Hold friend. on, there's what? I, I want to address something in the chat. I've, I've I've, I've kind of typed about this this ohio man 614 it's kind of disrespectful i'm i'm mad in six where is this ohio where's he at why is he not at the podcast right now like what's up where yeah, are you, yeah, where are you at ohio yeah, man six four, we're here yeah we're in new cool. albany yeah, where are man, you what's at up? what's the move i think he's out in reynoldsburg if it's the kid that i think i played some time ago reynoldsburg yeah, is he so. the best man player in ohio N hell well no. most the best man player in ohio Mm. Who else is in Ohio? Chat, check in. Who's the best man player in Ohio? I, mean, I guess you got to give it to Mo, but me and Mo, we haven't played. Mo's better than you. you haven't we haven't played. Up. We haven't played. So, so if you... Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Where's that? Uh, that's north of here. North? So yeah. he's like in between here. Yeah, and he's, like, he's like 15 minutes down the street. Wow, Ohio man. He's yeah. not real. Yeah. He's yeah. not real. <laughs> so if I give you my team, what's going to be your record? How many games am I playing? You can just play seasons. What? what, what? Just head to head. I mean, last chance qualifier, you're, you're not going to do good. You don't think I'm getting top 32? Fuck no. Plus, I'm going to play on my team when I get back in town. In a week, I'm on vacation, and I will be back in town in a week. I'm mad I'm not playing last chance qualifier. But Clef has got his shit set up. He will be ready to stream. And I think once I get back, we're going to do a 24-hour stream between me and Clef. We're just going to alternate for like a whole week. So that way you guys always have last chance qualifying action to watch. 24-7 for about a week straight. We're just going to alternate 12-hour shifts. Bang, 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 bang. So Needed Gaming will always be presenting a last chance qualifier stream. That is coming up next week. And Kent will have the pretty much the um, Fortnite streams. Yeah, after between 6 and 8.30. Six and, <laughs> Jesus Christ. 6 and 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Oh, my. Unless unless the wife 614 has something right, for y'all right, to do. Right, 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 right. Jeez, that's <laughs> rough. Yeah. So it's definitely going to be something we do. But maybe Ken will play Madden next year. Will you invest in Madden next year? Invest your time and your energy early in the year? We'll see how the game's playing. See how the game's playing. See how the game's playing. Okay. Yep. I will sign Siwoo when he's ready to give me his address so I can send him some stuff and 
stuff like that, you know. But but we'll see. Siwoo is in rare form today. I enjoyed his stream very much on YouTube. You all can check him out on YouTube. Amazing. What's up? Um, but like I said, YouTube, please hit the comment button or comment on if you think Kent did good on the podcast. Should he be a, a, a fixture on the podcast going forward? You know, we're looking for some more guest appearances from here on out. So he definitely uh, is one of the guys that uses Mutt as an excuse to why he's not good anymore at Madden. And I want you guys to not have that same attitude, man. If you're going to compete, man, you got to take it for what it is and, and use the situation to the best of his ability, man. You can't use it as an excuse. It will hold you back. Any excuse you use in life will hold you back. So, like I said, comment on how you guys think Kent did. And if buying a team really matters that much in Madden or not. Also, hit the like button, subscribe. This was Needed Podcast episode 21. We did this for 21 weeks. I appreciate all you guys coming by, man. Without your support, we really can't do much. You guys are the um, engine that turns the, or what, the wheel that turns the engine or the gear that turns the engine. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Ceiling's the, the sky. So, like Michael Jordan, what was his saying? <laughs> what? The ceiling's the roof. The ceiling's the roof. The ceiling is the, 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 ceiling is the, the, ceiling's the sky. The ceiling's the roof. Yeah. Whatever it may be. But anyway, appreciate you guys coming by. Hit the like button. Subscribe. I'm out of here. Kent, you want any last words for the people? This is your chance, man. I got nothing. You got like 200 people watching you. It's my best. Tune, like tune in 6 to 8.30 weekdays, Fortnite Pro. And Kent's, Kent's links will be below in the description. If you want to check out some shitty Fortnite play <laughs> and some average jokes, it will definitely be in here. His links are below, so you can go ahead and hit that. But I appreciate y'all coming by. Please hit the like button.